if you join uh, our firm, there's two websites you got to know, like the back of your hand. I have them both on my phone. Uh, one is MLS. And so um, the way that you put this on your home phone uh, or your, uh, not your home phone, but your iPhone is you uh, go to your, your Safari or Chrome or whatever is your browser. You type in matrix.netras.net. And once you type it in, the screen will look like this on your phone as well as on your laptop. Everybody's going to have a login and that's usually your license number with a zero in front of it. And then everybody's going to have their individual password uh, on your phone. Everything I'm doing will look identical uh, as it is on this computer because I don't use an app. This is an actual website I have on my phone. Sometimes you get to this site, you just have to hit the box in the top left corner. And when you do, the MLS opens up. For those that are with us, they know that when they pay their board dues, that they text me, they pay their board dues, and I, uh, with them by me, I clean up their MLS. And what I mean by uh, clean up their MLS is it looks like a grenade of boxes went off when you first log in, and I, I, I minimize all of them except the ones that I think are most efficient for you. You can always add more, um, but basically on the left, these are clients of mine, and um, it'll tell you that I sent them a search and that means they opened up a search. So, hey, how you doing? Oh, you're good. Uh, Tara, this is um, Ryan and he's a lender. Uh, let me, real quick, let me just introduce you. So uh, that's Robin, uh, Kay, David, Janet, Paul, Leslie, and Stuart. And, and Tara, she's uh, visiting today. So y'all you know, are actually all three kind of checking us out. So we just started. You're perfect. And we have Chick-fil-A and French fries over here and sweet tea and lemonade. So knock yourself out because there's like 85 pieces. <laughs> I'm not taking it home. All right. So anyway, so basically um, just so, so, uh, so you'll know where we're at is that I said first we need to go to MLS. So we're driving down the road and let's just say that Leslie calls us. And she's like, hey, my name's Leslie. Um, you know, I go, Hey, this is Doug Smith with DHS Realty. Hey, my name's Leslie. Um, I got your name from Joe Blow and I was thinking about putting my house on the market and just want to know if you could, you know, come tell me what my home's worth. And this is the exact same conversation I have with everybody that calls me. I'm like, absolutely. What, what's good for you? Oh, uh, how about this weekend? Sure. Saturday or Sunday? Uh, how about Saturday? 10 or two? Two. Ten, two. Well, I'll see you at two o'clock. Um, <laughs> So two o'clock Saturday and today is Wednesday. So this is a real conversation. And uh, I go, well, is this your cell phone? And she says, yes. Uh, do you text? I do. What's your email? Leslie at LeslieMock.com. And give me your address. So what is your real address? 104 Stonehaven Court. Okay. So she says 104 Stonehaven Court. So I write it down and I say, well, I'll see you uh, Saturday at 10. I get off the phone and immediately I text her my electronic business card through Haystack. I go to YouTube and I send her a video that says, don't pick your agent by luck. Then I go into MLS and this screen is what pops up. And I'm going to go right here to see if she ever had her home listed in the MLS since 2003. So what was the house address? 104. And you're okay with me doing it? Yes, absolutely. John Hagen. Okay. So I don't even need to know the rest because let's say that I, I don't know how to spell. Okay. But she told me 104 and then she said Stonehaven. So I just know s s it's an S. So all I have to do is hit S right there and it's dummy proof. It's going to pull up everything in the entire MLS all the way back to 2003 that ever had 104 and an S on it. Now you can see there's a crap load. So I'm going to scroll down just to show you that if it's in there, was it ever listed? Uh, in the last three years. Oh yeah, well, then it's going to be here. So as I'm going down, I'm going to, I don't want to take that long because of training, but you would be able to find it. So I'm going to actually, spell it out a little more okay so again she said 104 stone so i'm going to do stone <clears throat> and there it is okay so it might be even up higher and it is see up here it says 2018 does everybody see that no that's place Oh, that's not 104 Stonehaven? Oh, because it's one word. Yeah. Which one's yours? Village of Pluntree? Village of Ballantree. Okay. All right. So does everybody see that? So so basically by just putting 104 S, I could pull it up. But there's a whole lot of 104 S's since 2003. She bought it. So I put 103 Stone. And now it pulls up everything 104 Stone in the last 
17, 18 years. So now all I do is I'm going to find hers and I click on the MLS number. This is called the agent full report. And whenever you work with me, I'm going to tell you, you've got to know how to print this. And all you do is click on it. And when you click on it, it gives you the agent full report. That's the most information you can get on a property. And you're going to go to the bottom and just hit print. And when you hit print, you're going to pick agent full report and you're going to print it. Then you hit the back button. You always want to have the agent full report in the tax roll when you write an offer up or when you do a listing. The neat thing is here's the agent full report and right above the MLS number, it says listing right there. It says tax. You just click on it and it takes you right to the tax roll. So you print it. So now whether you're writing an offer or doing a listing appointment, which is what we're going to do right now, you know that you have the agent full report and the tax roll. It's absolutely everything you need to do a listing presentation. So I know I'm meeting her in four days at what's today, Friday. Oh, I'm meeting you tomorrow. I keep thinking today's Wednesday. So I'm meeting you tomorrow at, at two o'clock. So I need to do a CMA because so far I printed the agent full report and the tax roll. Right here it says villages of Ballantrae, however you pronounce that. I'm going to copy and paste it, but not the whole word. So all I do is copy and paste by right clicking. Then I'm going to hover over the search at the very top. That is what you're going to have to learn, like the hairs on the back of your hand because this is where you do every search for a buyer. You do a CMA here. If you didn't know anything about MLS, all you really need to know is how to get to this page, which is matrix.netris.net. And then to click on search, you just hover over and you're gonna see residential and you go quick. Uh, matrix.netris, it stands for North Texas Real Estate Information. So N-T-R-E-I-S. <laughs> net so matrix.netris.net and that's what you're going to want to save on your on your phone as a home screen as a website okay so this is set up and this is what i do with everybody that joins i uh, clean up their mls because when you initially get the mls this is the way it's marked when you log into this uh search and we don't ever want to send homes that are under contract and that's what those three are over there so what you don't even know usually is that that's what it looks like when you first get your mls but I just go in and clean it up for you. So everybody that logs into their MLS and does a search, it's only marked active because those are homes that are available. Okay. So this would be if I'm going to send a search to Stuart and he's a buyer, but I'm doing a CMA for Leslie. I don't, I, I, I want to pull actives, but what do I really want to pull? Souls. So what I tell people, and again, I do this on the phone, no matter where I'm at in the world, if I have Wi-Fi, I know exactly what to tell you. And it would just be, Hey, Act is already marked. Skip the next one. Mark the next three. Skip the next two and mark the next two. When you mark the next two, it's going to say 090. Change the 90 to, to 180 because how many months back do we want to go? Six. Then you go right down there to subdivision and you just copy and paste. Now, you can see that the whole name of the subdivision is not there. But if you hit the control button and A, that's the little asterisk, that wild cards. So that means it's going to pull up anything with that subdivision name. OK, for instance, I used to live in Deerfield. If I wanted to do a CMA, I could just type D-E-E-R-F-I and put an asterisk and put Plano and it's going to pull every single subdivision with Deerfield in it. OK, I don't need to actually type it out exactly because if I put the asterisk after it, it wild cards. It'll pull up anything. OK, so you can see at the bottom left, it says results for. Yeah, you've got temporary market. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mark that. That was an accident. So you can see there's four. Okay. Is everybody you can move over here, right here by Leslie if you want. No. Oh no, right here. Yeah, move around. Thank you. Okay, so you can see that um I've got four results. See at the bottom? You need to change the one eighty up there too to get one eighty. Oh, okay, yeah, I just didn't see that. Okay, so um, so if you see at the bottom, it says results. Now I'm doing a CMA. I'm not going to docu-sign anything to the seller. I'm bringing it because that's the close. You don't docu-sign something to the seller after you leave the house. That means you can't put a sign in the yard because you can't put a sign in the yard until you have the listing agreement. So you bring the paperwork, you close them at the house. If you get it signed at the house before you drive off, you put the sign in the yard in the key box. So I'm not using e-sign today at all. That's all we have to know about a buyer is e-sign, but we're not e-signing anything. When you close a seller, you bring the paperwork. Okay. So all I'm going to do is hit results. 
And when I hit results, I have a single line of five properties. Now, see these markings down here? They're only two are highlightable. I want to I want to mark this quick CMA, but right now it won't let me. And it'll say you have to check mark something. So if you check mark right above the one, all of those highlight. And then all you do is hit quick CMA. And it's going to present a CMA that is good for me. I've used it for 28 years. I don't need to do bells and whistles on a listing. And here it is. This is a CMA. It was done for me. All I did was select all and hit quick CMA. So you can see your picture will be at the top. You'll be able to, um, you know, market it however you want. Uh, it shows right now that there's a home on uh, on her street at 7701. That's 550. On the far right, it says it's been on the market nine days. Then right underneath there, you see solds. Those are what matters. And we can see that there's four. OK, so looking at that, I see that we could be anywhere from, you know, 460 to 620. And I would obviously find out what her square footage is. Uh, and then I would text her right now and say, hey, I'm doing some paperwork, Leslie. Uh, what were you thinking on price? Just with a question mark via text. And if she replied back and she goes, I don't know, I was thinking like 500. I would just reply back and go, boom, I'll see you Saturday at two. That's it. That's all I do. Now, I know that I'm going to print this. So, so far, I have the agent full report, the tax roll, and a CMA. But I said, you never knock on the door without what? A net sheet. Because every seller wants to know, what's the cost? What's your fees? What do I net? That's almost what anybody wants in any investment, anything in life. If you get married, what's it going to cost me? What am I going to make? What am I netting? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> what's the bottom line? So... Um, so what you can see here, just looking at it, cause I'm not going to print it, but you will print it and you, you study it a little, but it's just an opinion. As you see on the far right days on market, if you take out the high and the low, it's two days in one day because the high is four in the, I mean, the high is 91 and the low is one. So between taking 91 and one days out, you're left with two days or four days on the market. So that shows that that's an active subdivision that, you know, should be, you should be in pretty good shape. All right. So the next thing we're going to do after we print this is we need to do a net sheet. And so um, there's all kinds of apps that you can do a net sheet with. Um, every title company has a net sheet app. I just like to use even though we're at Truly. And the reason I do it is because it's just easy for me. Um, and I might already have it open. I'm just going to have to check. Okay, so you can see here. So what do you got? Can I ask you a question? On the, do you not put in 104 Stonehaven to compare? Oh, yeah, I would. Okay. Yeah, I would. I'm just kind of doing so. No, I actually don't. Okay. This is all I print. Oh, you don't? This is my full blown CMA. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, what I do do sometimes is there's always some blank space. See at the bottom? And you just write it. I write it. I write, I write their square footage four times mm -hmm. and put a times next to each one. Mm -hmm. And then I put, um, 156, 184, 138, 172, just to give me a range. Okay. Because at the end of the day, my goal is I want to try to get the home listed as low as possible to get it to sell. So she says, what, what'd you say? Hypothetically 400. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So I know that I'm meeting her tomorrow at two and overnight, she's not going to 390. What's she going to go to? 420. 420 or 410. Okay. <laughs> so the reason why I say that is it's important when you do your net sheet. So now here I am, and this is the beautiful thing about this net sheet. And this is an app called Chicago Agent, one word, space, one, O-N-E. Chicago Agent, one word, space, O-N-E. It's on the app store. I have it on my phone. It opens up just like this. When it opens up, you can see in the top, it's marked buyer. We're doing a net sheet. So all we do is mark seller. You wait a second, and it's going to load a seller net sheet. And I mean, I can't make it as simple as I, I mean, this is about as easy as I can make it. Uh, I'm going to be in front of my computer or on my phone because you can do exactly the same thing on both. I know that she wants 400. So I'm going to start there. I go to this tab. It says broker fees. Let's say that when I was talking to her, she told me she was going to buy a million dollar house in Frisco or a hundred thousand dollar house in Frisco. I don't care. Whatever she buys her next home, if it's with me, I reduce my commission from six to five. Okay. That's my business plan for me personally. Some agents don't, some agents still do six, some do four, some do three and a half. I know that that's my business plan. 
So she told me, yeah, I, I was like, hey, where are you moving? I'm definitely going to move in the DFW area. Well, I'm about to tell her tomorrow at two that she's definitely going to want to use me or whatever agent she picks. She wants to use what? Them as well when they buy. OK, so I know that I need to change that six to five. So all I do is hit two percent there. Everybody with me so far? I hit done and it's going to say, do you want this on all estimates or just this one? Just this one. Now you see the five percent. Now, what I do is I don't even mess with the taxes anymore because it defaults the highest tax rate in DFW. I always say in class taxes are about 2.4. Well, I'd probably be able to find her exact tax for last year. But why? Just use 2.73. You'll be a hero because the tax will always be in less. Does that make sense? You go down to interest rate and that's telling you what is her interest rate on her current loan. I don't care. So I'm going to delete it because when I leave her house, I don't tell her what she is going to get at closing minus her payoff i tell her what she's going to get just from me and then she finds her payoff on her own because when you guess her payoff it's always wrong and that means your next sheet will be wrong and that means that at closing in 40 days she blames you because the numbers weren't right but all along it was her thinking oh yeah my last statement said i owed 100 grand no really you owe 103 478 dollars so that means four thousand seventy eight dollars is going to be on me the at the closing date when the when the net's different. Does that make sense? So I don't care what she owes. So when I do this, I'm going to show you that when she goes, why uh, do you need to know what I owe? And I'm like, no, I don't need to know what I you owe. When I leave, just go online and find out what your payoff is and, and then subtract it from what I tell you that you're netting with me. OK, right below here, it says closing date. Well, if you hit the rotary, you can pick that you always wanted to pick 30 days in advance. I just think that's easy. So why make, why, why make something difficult? So that means that really when I opened this up, I really just filled in two things and deleted one. I had to put a price. I had to put the commission if it wasn't six because it default six. I had to go down. I had to delete the interest rate and then watch this. You just hit compute and it does a net sheet for you. <clears throat> it's going to take a second, but. Okay, so this is a net sheet. That means that she nets 371, 239 if she sells it for 400 grand. At the very bottom, it says share. You click on it. And on the right, you're going to have all these templates. And you can pick whatever template you like that fits your personality. As you click on it, it'll change the template. But basically, you'll print this. And it's going to look really cool when you print it. So. Let me see if I can do a print preview. I don't know if I can, but I'll show you what it looks like. <clears throat> so you can see this is what it's going to look like. When you print it, it's going to look like this. And at the bottom, it'll have your, your information. You can DocuSign your signature so it's always signed. So you never have to sign it. But who do I want to sign it? Leslie or Stuart, whoever the seller is. So let me just explain. I'm going to print this. So, so far, because we're done after this, and now I'm going to get into the forms. I printed an agent full report, tax roll, CMA, and three net sheets. This is the first one. So I print it. It's at 400. Now all I do, and this is crazy, you hit the back button, you scroll down, and you just change this to 410. So mine didn't come out like OK, so you change it to 410, you tab a couple and you hit compute again. And it's going to do another net sheet and then you do another one at 420. So I've got 410, 400, 410 and 420. But you can see it's pretty cool. So you print those. So, so far you have an agent full report, tax roll, CMA, three net sheets. Now you have to start getting the documents to write an offer. I mean, to write the listing. So that's why I say in class, there's two websites you got to know, like the back of your hand. One is matrix.netris.net. And the other one is zip forms. There's a million ways to get to zip forms. So I don't care how you do it, but you will need to learn that website like the back of your hand. And that's all we train on always is basically matrix and zip forms. So the best investment you'll ever have in your life, in my opinion, is nine dollars and ninety nine cents a year is zip forms mobile. So what I'm about to do on my computer, I can do on my phone in Washington, D.C. If I was riding a Harley and pulled over get gas i could write an offer at a, at a gas station because i've had an agent do it and text me hey i'm on my harley getting gas in washington dc i just sent an offer and got it accepted so what we're going to do is we're going to go to 
it, well, usually in our company, we go to texasrealestate.com, at least in the beginning. Then as you're a little more experienced, you find other ways to get to zip forms that make you comfortable. So when you hit texasrealestate.com, and for those that are going to be, you know, uh, agents with us, what I do is I, I do all this for you. So I pre-do all your templates, fill them out and everything. So I'm going to act like Stuart's the one doing the listing. Stuart would log in. And when he logs in, in the right corner, it would say, hi, Stuart. And then all he does is hit zip forms and the screen turns blue. <clears throat> when the screen turns blue, you're looking for one tab and one tab only. And it's going to be the new tab. So the screen is going to turn blue. And when I was talking to you yesterday saying, I don't have to look at the screen. I can tell you what's going to happen next. So the screen turns blue and we're going to see a new tab. And that's all we're going to click on. At the very top, you're going to see template tab. Never touch it. As long as you're breathing, don't touch the template tab. I've already done that. You don't ever have to touch the template tab. If you change a phone number and email, text me and I'll go in and do it because I can do it blindfolded and it won't get screwed up. Not that I'm saying that you'll screw it up, but I worked with an agent two days ago and she's super ADD out, like more than me. And and uh, and I was like, I was like, calm down, like let me finish first. And what I found is that she went into template and wrote up an offer. Well, that offer became a template for every future contract. So it had one buyer, one address, one price, one title company, certain earnest money, a closing date. Everything was filled in. And so I went in last uh, th that night. I said, just send me your login. I'm going to change everything. Um, and I don't mind doing it, but I spent a lot of time doing it in the beginning. And, you know, so right here you can see that, again, there's only one tab that says new. When you click it, five boxes pull up. And all we care about is the first three. You either have a seller, which is a listing, a buyer or the third tab is for both tenant and landlord. Well, we know that Leslie is a seller. So all we do is hit listing and then it's just going to ask you to name it. So I'm going to name it. And I like to go all caps at this point, just because I like all caps in my contract. So I'm just going to name it. I could, I can name it my best friend. I can name it one, two, three, easy street. She's never going to see the name of the file. It's for me to be able to go back in here and find out where it's at. I always tell people always mark residential right here. That little dot. It doesn't matter what it is. Just always mark residential. It just kind of makes it simple. You don't have to go, oh, it's a, a condo. Just mark residential. Oh, it's a vacant land. Just mark residential. The most important thing is that right here it says select a template. And all you do is hit it, and there's going to be, for you guys, four options. A buyer, seller, tenant, or landlord. Well, Leslie is a seller, so we're going to pick listing template. Once we click that, we're going to hit save at the bottom. And if you're on the phone with me, I'm going to say, you're looking for a white summary square and you're going to go two tabs over to documents. This next screen, you're going to see a white summary tab. <coughs> and you're going to go two tabs over to documents. Once you go to documents, this is templated. Every form that you need is basically in here. So I know that I need information about broker services. OK, let's say this is Stuart's zip forms. He's going to click on it. He's going to scroll down just to make sure it's not blank and it won't be. That last line is going to say Stewart, Stewart's license, Stewart's email, and Stewart's phone number. Janet's last line says Janet Worth. Leslie says Leslie Mock. But the first three lines are the same for everybody. All I do is hit print and print it. And then I hit the green back button. Well, we know that Leslie's a pre owner. She owned the house. So we need a seller's disclosure. I already have it in there. You just open it and you print it. You don't even touch it, you just print it blank. So, so far we have uh, agent full report, tax roll, CMA, three net sheets, an IBS, and a seller's disclosure. All we need now is a listing agreement. So we hit the back button and there it is, exclusive right to sell. When you open it, it's gonna be pre-filled for everything that you can already know. So I'm gonna look at the tax roll and go, oh, it's Leslie Mock. It's 104 Stone. And as you start typing in Haven, is it Plano? No, it's McKinney. Okay. So let's say you don't see it. I mean, I'm not going to go in depth, but it's probably a different way for me to type it in, but it usually pulls it. So, you know, you're going to put Allen, whatever the zip, zip code is. Okay. I mean, that's fine. So under email and phone, I don't need to put it in there again, because I already have her phone number. I just talked to her. So I don't care if you put phone number and email for your client. I'm never going to see this until I see that it's in the file to get closed. You know, I gotta, I gotta okay it to make sure it's initial, but I don't care. 
the rest of it is filled out in paragraph one. You go to paragraph two, and as I'm looking at the tax roll, which I have next to me, remember, it says, oh, it's lot six, block H, Crystal Creek subdivision. Because it says addition, and that really is a synonym for subdivision. And then it says, uh, what county is it? Or what say, oh, it's in Plano. Oh, it's Collin County. It's known as, you know, 104 Stone. Okay, and then you're done. You go to page two. Is there an HOA? Yes. Well, I already have it templated because almost 97% of homes have an HOA. So you'll never have to click that. It'll always be there. If it's not an HOA, then you have to uncheck mark it. If you don't know, leave them both unchecked. Um, what I don't know that I unchecked my it doesn't matter. contract last night. Oh, on the contract? Because it's not a HOA. Did you send it to me to look at? No, because I never know how to do that. I just assume you know how to look at it. <laughs> no. <laughs> never do. Yeah. Well, how would I know to look at it? No, you got to send it to me. I've told you how. Send email, two I boxes know, pop I get up. I'm so scared that I'm screwing up. Well, you'll find that's a minor problem if it, I mean, they would just counter say, hey, there's no HOA. But I mean, on a listing, it doesn't matter even if you get it wrong because it's just going in our file. It's not going to a title company. A listing is not. So if you don't know, just keep them both unmarked. If you know for sure one way or the other, then mark it. If you don't do anything, it's going to say that there is one because I template it that way. What if it has two? Agents? You're fine on that mark. Okay. okay. So now you just hit on the blank of when it starts and it pulls a calendar. Well, I'm meeting her tomorrow. And I, I just randomly pick four months out. I have no rhyme or reason. People ask me all the time, like, how long do you listing? I'm like, whatever mood I'm in. I mean, if, I, if she's my best friend, I'm going to put friggin' a year. I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, so I am, I am going to pick the same date. So it looks a little, you know, where it's now. This is what I have. I have templated that my commission is 6% always and that I'm going to push the 225 back to the seller to pay. And that's all we charge. So this is me. I don't template yours this way because it's a personal decision, but I do it that way. So right now, before we go any further, what I'm saying to her is, hey, I charge 6%, three and three. And I have a transaction fee of 225 that you could have to pay, but not if I'm your agent on the next house. I waive it. So it's kind of like a, I'm going to show you where I have it. But right now I don't have it because I haven't gone there yet. So I'm going to get to it and explain it to the seller. But as of right now, I go, hey, um, this is what I charge if you were moving to Alaska to mine for gold. And she's like, oh, well, good news is I'm not. And I'm like, well, where are you headed? Oh, I'm going to. Move to Frisco. Oh, well, then let me show you in, uh, in a couple paragraphs how I how I have a business plan. Um, so we keep going. Everything else is done. I'm not going to touch anything. It's all pre-filled. Everything. But nothing I'm changing. Until I get to this paragraph. OK, so this is what Leslie had said she wanted me to send. I'll send it to you. I'll copy in. Uh, so <clears throat> this is what I've always put since I've started real estate. Uh, you know, again, not everybody does it. And um, because of that, <clears throat> because of that, um, I, I don't template yours this way because this is a personal decision. So I'm just going to tell you how I have it. Uh, I just always like giving anybody the right to terminate. I even have it in my independent contractor agreement. So when you sign up into campaign, all you guys that have signed it, ICA, either party can terminate with one day notice. You, nothing changes. It's 225 for anything you got. It's 50 bucks for anything you got on a lease. Anything you don't have, if you have a listing, I'll let it go. Take it to your new broker. I mean, life's too short. I'm done with that crap. I don't I do not do politics and it's not a bureaucracy. So uh, I've always done that. Either party can terminate this agreement one day notice. It's, I do it on everything. I use it as a sales pitch on a listing because when I'm talking to Leslie right now, this is a listing. And I'm going to say, hey, this is where, you know, remember when I told you the 6%? This is a little bit about my business plan. So number one, I always believe that one day is going to be your last day. And at some point it's going to be true. So uh, I don't like to work with people that don't like to work with me. And I would have think that you don't want to work with me if you don't like me. And anybody can sound good on a listing. It's what I'm going to do after I put the sign in the yard. So if I ever put the sign in the yard and I've told you that I'm going to be in touch with you all the time. And next week you're like, that SOB, he just wanted the listing. I can't even reach him. If you want, you can terminate with me. I've never had anybody do that. But what I do is say, you should demand nothing less than that statement on any broker that you ever interview. Well, what I did is just eliminate all the competition because I don't know any agent that does it. And I don't know any broker that recommends it. So when another broker comes and she goes, I like you a lot more than that young whippersnapper yesterday named Doug. I mean, he was just too hyper. 
But there is one thing that, you know, Doug told me, and that is, you know, I can pick who I want, but I should demand nothing less than, you know, I like the right to terminate. And all of a sudden he's like, gets real defensive and just lost the listing. So now at the end of the day, she does go with that hyper kid from yesterday because I'm the one that said you should demand nothing less than that. Again, I've never had anybody terminate. I've terminated with a seller and a buyer over 28 years. And I would have done it whether I had that in there or not, just because they were being disrespectful to me. And when I say I did it, I mean, like, I did it like that. I went in and terminated their listing on my phone, lifting weights at the gym because they were disrespectful to me. Um, what about the challenge now that I'm, I'm hearing from different brokers that people are going in and the consumer is a lot smarter now? Well, I mean, and this would be a benefit to a consumer. Well, let's keep reading. Okay. So that's just the first sentence. Now it says, if Doug is Leslie's next agent on her next home, I'm reducing my commission from six to five. So let's say that she says to me, well, I interviewed Redfin yesterday mm -hmm. and they told me they'll do it for four. I look at her and go, I can match that. What other question do you have? Well, I know, but am I going to, am I going to make 2% of zero or 1% of 400 grand? So again, I'm making 1%, but is she buying a home next month? Okay. And well, I mean, it's all tied to this. So the next sentence says, none of that crap applies unless I'm your agent on the next home. So let's say that next, let's say that we get this home on a contract on a 30 day closing and two days before closing, she goes, you know what? I can't find anything. I'm going to do a one year lease. Well, sign me in on the apartment. And also I'm going to go ahead and revert back to my 6%, but I will rebate you 2% next year when I help you on the home. She'll never forget my name. But if I go, I, I really trust you. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce my commission to 4%. And I know you'll call me in a year. Well, Leslie just said she's single. So what happens if she meets somebody at happy hour who's a realtor? Well, I'll never win that. And so now I see her in five years at an Easter egg hunt. And she's like, oh, my God, I really loved you working with me. I'm in my new home now. And I'm like, what? And she's like, oh, yeah, trust me. I've had it happen uh, with firemen, like about 80 of them. Um, and I didn't list it for four. I listed it for friggin' what? Zero. Wow. Because they told me they'd be my, and I, that's how I got a lot of my real estate clients. I don't do it anymore. That's why I have, yeah, exactly. Just trying to pass it on to you guys. So that's what it says. It says if Doug Smith is the buyer's agent for the seller's next home, Doug Smith's listing commission is reduced from two to three. Home would need to be under contract before listing closes. The next one, if Doug's the only agent involved, that means I'm holding an open house or somebody calls me on my sign. I'm going to meet him. And I'm going to hand them this packet when I get out of the car, rolled up. And I just go, hey, I'm Doug. Uh, oh, I'm Leslie. Hey, let's go take a look. This is a little packet of information on myself. Um, hey, backyard faces east. Good summertime shade. Wow, I've never heard that before. Oh, yeah, let's take a look. Where are you from, Leslie? And she, we have a rapport. And then at some point, right before we leave that house, I'm going to go, hey, get that packet. Let me just show you a couple things. And again, this packet on the inside, it's just got our little, it's cheap. I mean, these, I get them made here. Okay. Uh, you turn the next page. It's got my resume. You turn the next page. It's got my son, Mitchell. He's 20. It's got a bio that I crafted for him in two minutes because he got in some trouble in high school and went to an alternative school. And then he went across the state line to a rehab center. But he did construction work up there. So instead, I painted a story where he went to do construction work. And it's true. And um, also that he got to, into Texas Tech. It's true that he graduated from Lebanon Trails last year. That's true. But at the end, it says Mitchell always yearned to get his real estate license and joined his stepdad on the retail side. To that end, Mitchell obtained his license in 2020. Teams with his stepdad, Doug Smith, mm -hmm. together they have every designation that is obtainable in the real estate industry. And Douglas has a renewed energy and enthusiasm as a future looks bright. A future looks bright. Mitchell can be reached at MitchellMitchellGardner.com and all social media. It's just a little thing. He doesn't have a resume. He's 20. Um, but the next thing and the only reason I have this packet is because there's the IBS. So I've just given it to her. And the neat thing that I used to do, which I don't do, I don't think. Yeah, I have his IBS also. But I used to put my buyer rep right here, templated. And the top would say, your name goes here. So when I give it to Leslie, I'm like, hey, you know, if you like me, I like you. And I show you in the next couple of weeks, at some point, I'm going to docu-sign this form. It actually makes me your advocate. So I've given it to you. It's exactly how it is. It's a, it says your name goes here. It would say Leslie Ma. So look it over at your leisure and... You know, probably the next time I show you, I'm going to docu-sign it to you. Do you docu-sign? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, it's just my office policy or my broker's policy that I get a buyer rep sign the second time I go out showing. 
it just shows I'm your advocate. Look it over. Of course, it has either party can terminate with one day notice. So it really is a day to day document. And as long as I do my job, I feel like you'll work with me. And the day I don't, I wouldn't work with me either. <laughs> and I think that's pretty non intrusive. Well, yeah. yeah. But that's you're, all you're seamless with it. it but, it's a yeah. lot more clumsy exactly. when you do <laughs> I know, but that. but again, a lot of it is just repetition. Right. So you knock on your own that's door right. or you have your <laughs> yeah. you can have it. I have twenty of them. It's true though. But my, my my point is is that it's like I play tennis. And so, you know, I don't I don't I don't practice all the time, but I shadow stroke mm -hmm. in my mirror sometimes before a match. So I have a I have my racket and I, I get in a position like I'm returning a serve and I, I you know, shadow stroke. Right. And and it becomes habitual where then when I get into a tight match, I'm not going, oh, I need to hit top spin or slice it or chip and charge. I just know that I'm going to practice the way I was doing it over and over again. So what would stop somebody that's a friend of yours from pulling up in front of your house and you pulling up in front of them and act like they're a complete stranger and you're meeting them for the first time to show a house? Right. Nothing. Or yeah. to do a listing presentation yeah. for your spouse or your significant other. All this stuff that I'm doing this is all training and you can do it. I mean, I have multiple trainings in here called Daffy Doug. And it's no real buyer. It's just, you know, and I e-sign it to Daffy Doug. The email's not real. Yeah. And I mean, but you know, I could put my own email and then I know what the client looks like when they're getting the email. Because a lot of times it goes to what the first time you email them? Spam, Spam or junk. Yeah. So you got to follow up. Um, all right. So then so so all that means is that I'm gonna reduce my commission from six to five. If you help me, if I help you with the next home, and then to four, if I'm the only agent, and she goes, I, can, you can do that. Well, aren't I making more than I would with two agents? Yeah, because at two agents, I'm making two. If I'm the only agent, I'm making four. That's more than even if she wasn't buying a home with me, and I charge six because it's split three and three. But she doesn't understand that as a as a, as a homeowner, and so she looks at you like you're doing what. Good business deal. person, giving her a break because there's a 50,000 agents in DFW. Somebody will do it. You know, Redfin has signs going down the tollway that say 1% listing fee, and that's it. Right. And everybody calls because they think, oh, I've heard 4% or 6%. They get the knock on the door. Then they explain in the kitchen, oh, no, well, 1% is our listing fee. But yeah, obviously, three goes to the other agent. And they're like, so it's really four? But they're already in the door <laughs> and usually probably have a pretty good success rate. So what I'm saying is in our fee structure of 225, you can compete with 1% all day long. Yeah. And that's your business call. That's, oh, yeah. but one thing you'll never have to do with me is call to ask for a, a commission authorization on, on what you're going to charge. Because no matter what, you're doing 225 on your first 20. So let's say you help your parents. I want to list your home for zero. Oh, I, I commend you. That's great. And the title company will collect 225 at closing. <laughs> I want to sell my own home. Well, don't take a commission, put it in the proceeds of the house because you won't be taxed on it if it's your primary dwelling. But, you know, so, uh, and then and then the last one says, and this is the kicker kind of, the last one says, if Doug Smith is Leslie's agent on the next home and it's under contract before this home closes, the transaction mm -hmm. fees wait. So remember when I had six and 225, both of those change based on this paragraph, okay? And, and I'll copy and paste it and send it out on group me or something. And then at the very end, it's already marked. So my point was, what did we really do? We filled in page one and a little bit of the top of page two, and then we never touched the document again. You hit save, you wait for it to say saved, and that's what I'll also tell you on the phone. If you ever hit saved, you want to wait for it to say saved. If you ever hit save and it looks like that, generally all you have to do is hit over here in the column and it'll go, it'll go dark or you can do it. Okay, so like right now, okay, because I made a change, it, it does save. But sometimes when you like make a change up here, it won't and it'll still be unhighlighted. All you do is hit over here in this white space and that'll go like that where you can click it and then just wait for it to say saved and then you print it. OK, now, um, so far, just to recap, I've got um, the agent for report. I've got the tax roll, CMA, three net sheets, IBS, seller disclosure and the listing agreement. Now, the fact that her home was already in the MLS, I can print that agent for report. And I can kind of go off that when I'm in the house to measure and things like that. Does that make sense? Because yeah. it's already been listed. But let's say it wasn't listed. All you do is hit the back button. And in these forms, you'll see one. Now, let's say that I hit the back button too much and I'm out of it already. And I'm like, oh, crap, what do I do? Right there, it says Leslie. So all I do is click on that box. It takes me back to the white summary square. I go two tabs over to documents. I'm right back where I was.
So the biggest thing is to chill when something happens. Uh, and if, and before you, you know, screw the pooch, call me or text me and, you know, you'll always be able to get you there. Uh, right here, this form, that's if the home has never been in the MLS before. And basically what it is, it's 12 pages. It's every criteria search in the MLS. You definitely want to double side print this because it's 12 freaking pages. I've never printed this when the home's already been in the MLS because the agent for report is every one of these criteria. Does that make sense? Yes. But if the home's not in the MLS, then this is a good guide because you're going to be like writing down, oh, there's four bedrooms. Oh, there's a study. Oh, let me me let me measure the study. But if it's already been in the MLS, all those measurements are there already. So if I went to your house, I wouldn't have this. But if I went to your house and you built it, that means it might not have been in the MLS. Then I don't find it in the MLS. Then I need to print this because this is going to be my guide. It's it's a it's an input form. It's a residential data. I put it in your form. So I I, I template it. Uh, well, when I say I template it, it's the only thing that I don't template because you don't pre-fill it because it's going to be particular to the house you go into. But it'll be in your template. Just it'll be really one of the only forms that I don't type anything in. Okay, so. So you got to fill all that out. Okay. What? Okay. Out. And all you do is you double print it, you double side it, and you have a pen, and um, you you have it in your document. So now I'll just explain. I mean, I'm not gonna. Uh, now I'll just explain like how I do the listing so that we understand. So I always get to a listing about 15 minutes early, maybe even earlier than that. I just make sure there's not any traffic. I'm just super weird. Like I'll I'll leave friggin' an hour early when a house is 20 minutes away. That's just me. You do whatever. Um, I get there. I park about four or five houses down by a park or something. I don't want to look like a pedophile. Right. So, you know, I mean, I've had cops come up to me before and like, hey, a neighbor said you've been here for 40 minutes. I'm like, I'm a realtor. And like, you have a card? And I'm like, sure. And like, I give them a card. I mean, I'm serious. Like, but I don't care. I'm, I'm going to be there early. And then I pull up in front of the house about 10 minutes before and I text Leslie. I'm like, hey, I'm here a little early. You want me to wait till 10? Or are you good? I'll wait till 10. All right, no problem. Come on in. Well, then I get out and I have a packet of my stuff in a little folder and I knock on the door and she answers. And I'm like, hey, I'm Doug. She's like, hey, I'm Leslie. And I'm like, well, nice to meet you. Well, come on in, Doug. So we're right here in the foyer and I just go something like, man, what a beautiful house. So what's going on? Like an open ended question. She's like, oh, I'm moving to Australia to play with kangaroos. And you're like, oh, that's crazy. Like, I would never go to Australia. I can't handle the 36 hour flight. And I might talk to her about how I went to Africa, which is not too far from Australia. And that's why I'll never travel that far again because it was freaking 36 hour flight. And so she'll be laughing. I'll cut some jokes. And, um, and at some point I'm just going to say, Hey, show me around. Let me see what we got here. And she'll go, Oh, okay. So she starts showing you around and you know, I mean, if fleas are jumping on you, then you don't want to say the house is immaculate. But if she has some basic home ownership pride, I mean, I usually just say, Hey, what a beautiful house. Like, you know, uh, master down and game room upstairs and, you know, at some point after you're done being shown the house, it's just a normal kind of a conversation breaker. And you just go, why don't we have a, a seat in the kitchen somewhere and I'll show you what I got. And she's like, oh, yeah, come on over. So, you know, do you want a water? No, I'm good. Or take a water. I don't care. It doesn't matter. That's not going to you know, be a decision maker on whether she lives with you if she offers you some water. And uh, and then you sit down and then you open the file and you turn it around and you got to learn how to read upside down. And so the first thing I'm going to do is like, I'm going to turn it upside down and go, Hey, this is just an agent full report. Uh, every time I do a listing, I check to see if there's any activity since 2003. And it looks like you bought your home in 2015. And she's like, yeah, I was like, it looked like you closed for uh, 350. Is that right? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So uh, I turn it over and then I go, this is a tax roll. It just shows uh, that you're the owner, which I always like to confirm. And at the bottom, it shows you that the taxes were, $12,455 last year. Is that right? Uh, that sounds right. I'll stop and go, do you escrow or do you pay your taxes every November? Oh, I escrow. Okay. Well, just so you know, when you close on your house, you'll be debited January 1st to the day of closing. And that will be taken from you. Even though you have that amount over with your lender, you'll get that amount back about eight weeks later. So I'm about to show you a net sheet. And I just want to let you know, the reason that I pull your tax rate is because I want to know your taxes because you'll absolutely be debited that amount from June, January 1st to June 28th. Even though you have that amount, the title company doesn't care. So they're going to debit you again. And then you'll get the money back from your lender about eight weeks later. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. So I turn over the tax roll. And the next document that I'm going to have is I'm going to have a CMA. I'm going to turn it sideways and go, hey, this is what's activity, blah, blah, blah. Remember when I talked to you yesterday, you said 400. You still thinking that? 
Well, I mean, Dow got thought on it, and I think I'm going to go at 420. Oh, okay, well, cool. Well, here's the net sheet at 420 because I did one at 400, 410, and 420. So I explained to her, just like I showed you, like I had to pick a hypothetical closing date. So I picked 30 days out. Uh, this is the price at 420. This is all your closing costs, which I'm about to itemize over here. Uh, you can see that I don't care about what your balance was, but you see that I have a prorated tax amount. That's January 1st to the day of closing in June. That's what I told you is going to be debited. But of course, you'll get it back in uh, eight weeks. And she's like, oh, OK. And I go, the reason why I don't show it as a wash is because... You're not getting it as a wash. You're going to be debited. So are you interviewing other brokers? Yeah, I've got a couple tomorrow. Well, make sure when you look at the net sheet that you don't see a zero there because it's not accurate. You're actually going to be debited about $7,000. So tomorrow, if you interview some brokers and they tell you're going to net $7,000, but they show the taxes are zero, honey, you're not going to get nothing at closing. And I wouldn't say, honey, I'm just doing it because I'm joking, but I'm not disrespectful like that. And Leslie knows I'm it's just training. But I mean, you would say almost something smart, Alec, like, uh, homie, want to do that with that broker? Because uh, they don't if they don't know how to do a net sheet. Right. What else are they going to not know how to do when you get a real contract? Yeah. yeah. And it's just a way to pat her on the back and go, you're going to pick me. You just don't know it because I haven't even gone over the either party can terminate the business plan, the four, the five. All that okay so then it shows what she's gonna net then I go over here on this side and it shows a 1% title policy well I don't know the last time I asked the seller to pay title because the buyers are paying it now but I'm gonna go ahead and show her the worst case scenario and so it's gonna say hey uh, this 1% here you might not pay it but as of right now I don't know what's gonna happen and I've had my license for 28 years and if you just got your license yesterday, you can say, we've had our license for 28 years. And traditionally, the, the title has always been paid by the seller. But in this market, buyers are covering it. So any offer I get, Leslie, I'm going to send you a new net sheet. It'll be appropriate for that offer. So this is just for today, and it's a worst case scenario. So after I go over the title policy, the rest of the fees are basically regulated by the insurance board. So it's going to be just regulated title junk fees until we get to what? The commission and on the commission, it's going to show 6%, 3 and 3 or 3 and 2. And that's when I'm going to tell her, hey, I'm giving you a 1% reduction. And of course, it'll go to 4 if I'm the only agent. And that's your walk away. And she goes, so what if I tell you I owe 110? I just subtracted from that. And I go, yeah, but I don't want to know what you owe because usually you don't really know. So what I'd recommend is when I leave today, you just go online, put a closing date of June 28th, and it will tell you the payoff as of that day. With that, subtract it from this. And that's what you'll walk away with. While you're on there, look at your escrow account because put escrow balance as of June 28th also, and you'll get that full refund back, but it'll be like eight weeks after closing. So your three net sheets are going to be based on the commission? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Everything's going to be in there. Remember when I showed it to yes, you? Yes, I remember, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how do I make three net sheets. Are they all? Oh, no. All the net sheets are going to be with the same commission, five or oh, six. Okay. And then I'm just going to explain to her. Like, hey, before I came out here, I didn't know you were buying another house. So I have 6% because that's my business plan if you go to Louisiana and I never hear from you again. But you told me you're going to move to another area. I'm going to be your agent. I'll reduce that six to five. And then if I'm the only agent, I'll do four. But I already have six in all of them, unless I know for sure before I go out there that she's moving. Then I'll go ahead and work it so to all the same all the commissions. Same. It's just 10,000 different. Same closing date. Everything's the exact same. When you're in there, you're on. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I mean, uh, for all three, I'd have the same commission. Five or six. Yeah, and and then I would just let her know, like, if it was five, and I said, hey, it's five, but if you decide to move to Alaska, it's going to be one percent more. So the difference is the is the four three versus the four ten on the sales price. And 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 the commission times ten thousand. Because it's a ten thousand dollar difference. Right. So if it was four, it'd be four hundred dollars plus ten thousand. Everything else is regulated. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, when he's in there showing you, like, <clears throat> functionally, when you do the first net sheet, you just, you just do the left arrow and then change the number. I'll show you. We'll do it in a second. No, we'll do it for sure. I'll do it at the very end because we might do landlord next Friday just to make sure this is all seller stuff because I'd rather you be comfortable. You're going to do more listing of buyers than, you know, or tenants, but really landlords won't be as much. So, anyways, uh, I'm at that net sheet. She goes, yeah, it looks good. I flip it over three pages. And right as I'm flipping, I go, that's all for you to keep. 
And now I'm going to cover, you know, my, my office forms. And just so you know, Leslie, I always come prepared. So I do have a sign and a key box in my back seat of my car. I'm on your plan. But if you're ready, all I need is a spare key after we go through this. And I'll have your home in the MLS in 30 minutes. And you can have showings tonight. So I just want you to know that. So then I flip to the IBS. And I'm like, this is just a disclosure. It just shows that there's three ways I can represent you. Just a disclosure. I just turn it over. I'm at the seller's disclosure. I give it to her. I go, you're going to have to fill this out. And if you want to list with me, I usually wait for it um, because I like to put it on the MLS for everybody to see. It uh, becomes part of the contract. And, you know, worst case, I could leave and you could send it to me in a couple hours. But it's called a seller's disclosure. You basically fill out your own handwriting and anything since you've lived here or anything really before you owned it that you know, it's just good to always disclose, disclose, disclose. What about, yeah, do that. Oh, what about that? Oh, don't even finish. If you think about it, go ahead and put it down. And I'll help you with any questions, like if you don't know the difference between an attic fan and a ceiling fan. But basically, other than that, anything that comes to mind, write it down. And she goes, okay. So then I flip that over and I have the listing agreement. And I'm just like, you know, this is a pretty standard listing agreement. Um, are you interviewing other brokers? Yeah, remember I told you tomorrow? Well, just so you know, mine's a little different than a lot of brokers. So uh, I'm going to, and, and I, agent, uh, you know, it's different than a lot of agents. I'm just going to show you kind of the main parts of this listing agreement. Um, most of it's bullet point, uh, a boilerplate. Uh, the first paragraph just has your name. It has my broker name. I've got the legal description. Um, I've got a begin date and end date. I usually go like four months, but in mine, I'm about to show you that I let either party terminate. And she goes, what does that mean? And I was like, well, let's say that I say something that's offensive to you. Or you say something offensive to me. I just don't believe that we work with people that we don't enjoy working with. So I'll let you get out of it. What do you mean? Even if it, even if it's not September 30th? Yeah, even if it's tomorrow. Like I'll just come get my sign and move on. And a lot of yeah, agents, that's powerful. That's powerful. a lot of agents just don't do it yeah. um, because it's basically a day-to-day -day listing. Um, but again, a lot of brokers don't do it. So I don't care who you interview with, but saying that I do it, I don't care, but don't act like it's a standard because they're going to go, yeah, we don't do that. Now, there's another little section in the listing that I always put zero in. I didn't cover it. It's called protection period. And here's the philosophy behind a protection period. Let's say that she listed with me today and I didn't have the either party can terminate. That, meant, that means that now the listing is a four month and I can contractually obligate her to keep it. Let's say that it goes to September and it expires. And Kay knocks on the door the next door next day and he goes, hey, I showed your house um, while it was listed with Doug and uh, I had an agent. Um, I was wondering if you'd be happy with like just, you know, now selling it to me for about six percent lower. I'll leave my agent and, you know, you don't have an agent. Well, if I had 30 or 40 days in that listing, it would latch on to the September 30th. And if I found out that he showed it when I had it listed, I could go after her for a commission but only if she did for sale by owner. The moment she relists it, it doesn't matter. So why in the hell would you put 90 days in there? You just put zero because when it's over, it's over. Yeah. If for me to find out that he went to buy the home, I'd have to be stalking him or her. Right. And she would be like, how'd you know? And I was like, well, I was looking through your window at night. I saw you doing an email <laughs> to uh, Kay and I knew that he, and, and I knew that he showed it over the last four. I mean, give me a break. So I put zero in that also. But I explain it to her. So I say to her also, you should demand nothing less than either party can terminate and a zero in the protection period. Almost every broker defaults 90 to 180 days in there. And even most brokers don't know the reasoning. Yeah. And if they don't know the reasoning, sure as hell, the agent doesn't know it. So now all of a sudden tomorrow comes and she's asking an agent to change the listing agreement. And they, fumble. they are not going to do it. They're going to, and if, and if, worst case, if she said, can you explain that paragraph to me? They wouldn't know how, how I just explained it to her. Uh, and, and so a lot of agents think that if you relist it, it covers you. It doesn't. As soon as it's relisted with another broker, it's over, Rover. It's only if she continued to do it for sale by owner. And somebody came that showed it when I had it and was trying to cut me out of it to get a better deal that I found out I could sue her for a commission. I'm never going to know. I'm just never going to know. Yeah. And if I did know, it would be really weird. I mean, like really weird, like where I could go to jail. Like, well, how would you know that, Doug? <laughs> Nobody knew except my emails. I, I knew the combo and I knew your I knew your security system. I was in your house at 4 a.m. and I was checking your emails to see. I mean, it's just weird. So anyways, as I go through it, I mean, I think you get the gist of the listing.
Um, and you go through it. And again, at the end, I just go, and I mean, this is how I do it. I just go, what do you think, Leslie? And if she goes, I like it. You say you have your key box in your car. Right? That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. I don't even wait for her to say it. But as soon as I hear her do anything like this, I go, well, cool. Let me go get my sign and key box. Look for me a spare key and I'll be right back in. And I just shut up and get up and walk towards the door. I make her stop me. And I've never had anybody stop me. Now, if she's not ready, it's not going to happen. And I'm not going to be weird. Like, what would it take today, Leslie? Uh, because that's what they trained you on in the 80s to say shit like that. Oh, my God. Oh, I mean, they still do. Some people still do. This. Oh, no, I'm not joking. You ought, to, you, ought to go some, you, know, you ought to go some training right now with some big brokers. So, um, so I've just never done that. And obviously, like, if she's going through a divorce, I know it's not the right time because there's going to have to be some documentation. And I'll never forget when I was with my past broker, uh, I did a lot of, I had people shadow me. And I had three agents meet me at George Bush and Jupiter at a Silver Fox and park in the parking lot and go with me on a listing. And it was supposed to be at 10 a.m. And so we get in my Tahoe and we're pulling out and the seller calls me. And I've told this story, but the seller calls. He's like, hey, Doug, you know, I know you're coming over at 10, but I, I did tell you I was going through a divorce, right? And I was like, yeah, you did. And he's like, well, my wife is upstairs. She's locked herself in our bedroom and she's cutting with scissors all my clothes. He goes, do you want to cancel? And I go, I'm almost there. <laughs> and he, he goes, well, I'm good if you're good. I was like, I'm good. And so I got there at 5 till 10. He let me in. I left at 10, 10. Not with the listing because you can't list, but I'm going to get it. But I wanted to meet him face to face. And that's where you close. Uh, I mean, I could have easily said, no, let's let me come back. And then his divorce attorney has a wife that's a realtor. I mean, then I'm, I'm out. But you might not get it when you meet people in person. But statistics have shown that you're at 95 percent if you meet somebody in person, because the only other five percent is that you do something stupid, like talking about Joe or or Trump and people like, yeah, I don't, I don't want politics in my, my real estate life. Uh, so, all right. So that's, that's the seller training real quick. How many people actually do uh, see other, uh, uh, interview multiple? Yeah. A lot. Uh, really? Yeah. Two or three for sure. Probably not, you know, uh, I mean, I went, I mean, just to give you an idea I, about five, six years ago. I mean, I'm, I'm a big tennis player. Like I, I, I do pretty well home own and my tennis coach listed his home. And I mean, I thought it was a done deal. Like I we went to nationals with this guy, won, won a tournament with him. And uh, so I go over and you know, I'm not talking to him and his wife. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'll do it for zero. You know, if you're tennis, so you should be your agent on the buy side. I get in the car going and actually an agent was supposed to shadow me. Freaking came late, pissed me off. Like at 10, 10, he knocks on the door and I'm already in the house. And I mean, I was about to choke him out. I mean, he didn't make it in real estate. Uh, I mean, when you're coming to shadow me, like don't show up 10 minutes late. I mean, I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, that's just common sense. You either got or you don't. Anyways, I get home and I like text him just like I always do. Like, hey, man, it's good seeing you. See you practice next week. He's like, I just want to let you know my wife's best friend's an Ebby agent. And he's like, it's whatever my wife wants. I mean, at that point, I knew it was over and I never got the listing. It sold in a day. It would have signed. It would have sold with a squirrel. I mean, it didn't matter. It was just like it was the time when, like, if you're breathing and got a listing, it sold like now. Um, so sometimes it doesn't matter if, if there's a family member, you ain't going to win that battle. It don't matter how yeah. you know good you are, uh, because at the end really? of the day, huh? the well, you'd be surprised. They might not be friends after the transaction, but they'll be, but, or, or family, they might not be family after the transaction, but family will get it. And then it depends on how that transaction goes. All right. So that's the, what'd you have Stuart? You, you typically do a listing for both husband and wife. Same time, or you just do I try to. I, mean, yeah. I try to. Yeah, on this. Most of the husbands like they want to deal with it. You know, right. I, I liked how Doug handled it yesterday. She was upstairs working on her computer, and as we were walking back downstairs with the husband, Doug said, hey, "Would you like to join us?" Yeah, because yeah, he, because he, he, yeah, because he wasn't gonna. He, he wasn't gonna ask her, and, she and then she came she down and. Hesitated, but then she could yeah. join, yeah. which was good. Yeah. It, you know what? It just depends. Uh, I mean, I even say this. If I was ever e-signing and we're going to do a, t a landlord for five, 15 minutes, I'll be done. Uh, but whenever you're e-signing to a family, I also ask who wants it first, because that's important sometimes. Sometimes the wife's like, oh, you'll send it to me first or we won't be working together. And I'm like, it will come to you then. <laughs> like, uh, And then some don't care. Like, I don't care in my family, but, you know, some do. So. Um, all right. So now real quick, let's just. Uh, Let's just act like now we have somebody that calls us and they want you to list their home for lease. So that means that they're going to be the seller. So we'll do the same thing. Let's say that um, 
let's say that Leslie called and she's like, Hey, I live at 104 stone something. And I was not paying attention, but I know it's at least 104 stone. Uh, I set up the same appointment for Saturday at 2 PM. And, um, basically at this point, um, I just need to get into the MLS. So I do it on my phone. I do it on my laptop. It doesn't matter. Uh, you're going to get into this screen and you're going to go first to the same thing I've told you. 104 and type in stone it, dumb, it, it, it just makes it dummy proof it's going to pull up 104 stone on any house since 2003 you hit enter and that's going to be your, your box you're going to scroll down and find it uh we already know that it's this one i'm going to click on the agent full report which is the mls number i'm going to print it after i print it i'm going to select right above the mls number tax i'm going to print that i'm then going to go in and i'm going to do a cma i'm going to go not for solds though for lease so instead of going residential quick for sales, I'm going to go residential. I'm sorry. Instead of going residential quick for homes, I'm going to go residential lease quick. And this is also what I've templated everybody to make sure you're only sending active homes for lease. But this would be for a tenant. I'm doing a CMA for a landlord. So I'm going to have the first one marked. Skip coming soon. Sometimes this happens and it's fine. You just got to make sure you find out where you're at. It's a freaking ad to kill me. I got too many sh things open up here. Where is it? Just give me a second. Just grab this to it again. All right. So, anyways, so so we know we got 104 stone. Okay, we go find it. All right, uh, we print it. We click on the MLS number. Uh, we know that we're gonna hit the tax. I know that's not the right one, but I'm just it's the same deal. So now I'm gonna go in and do search residential lease. When I do search residential lease, I'm going to hit the next three after coming soon, skip the next two and hit lease and pending. I'm going to change them zero to 180. Do you really care about the active contingency you pick out and open options? I do. Just for, I just, I have it. I've done it my whole life. And then I'm going to put the subdivision. Active kickout, it's not even applicable, I don't think, on leases. I just am in the habit of doing it. It's just on sales. Active kickout means the buyer has a home that they have to sell to buy that one. And you could show that home. And if your buyer liked it, they wouldn't be a backup. They would actually call the first contract and give them a three day right to waive their contingency. And if they couldn't, that first one's knocked out and yours takes over. So it's different than a backup. What's your subdivision again? Estates. Village of Valentine. So let's say I didn't know how to spell Bal, uh, that name. I just go uh, B A L, and um, now that means I'm off a little. Let me pull it up real quick. <clears throat> the good news is when when you keep messing around like this, it's just it's just good for training. So again, 104 Stone. I'm gonna go down there. There it is. Okay, it is Village of Bal. That means that there's no homes released there. So that's good. So again, I go to search residential lease. Okay. Uh, I'm going to mark these. I already know that there's not any homes in that subdivision, that leased, because nothing came up. Okay, maybe I'll put it again to see if I put it in wrong. So, village of B A L, asterisk, and it doesn't show anything. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead do a search from miles from that address. So, right here in the middle. This is another way you can do a CMA when nothing comes up in the subdivision. I always start five miles out. And all you do is slowly type in her address, 104 Stone, and you wait. And I keep going, what was it? Stone Haven. Oh. Hey, is it that one? Yes. Okay, so then you, it's already pre-populated. You just select it. Now you look at the bottom. There's 812 homes uh, or homes. There's, uh, there's 745. Well, that's way too many. So there's probably... Um, we're going to have to change some things. So, uh, maybe I go to bedrooms. How many bedrooms? Four. So four plus what year was it? Uh, 1997 and a plus sign. Now there's 284. Now I'm going to type in McKinney. There's still 229, uh, pool or no pool. No pool. Okay. So I can do down here. No pool. I'm just trying to get that number down because that's way too many. One or two story. Two. Okay, so master down. Yes. So master down. Uh, three garage. Yes. Three or two. Three. 
Okay, so that's going to be the killer there. That's going to knock out a lot. So you can see there it says three covered. That's not the same. So what I do is this, and this is just a little uh, little trick. If you don't see the criteria up above and you're looking for it, right below this results tab, do you see where it says add remove? Well, on y'all's, it'll only say add. You'll click it, and on the left is everything that's a search criteria in the MLS. On the right is all you have. So right here, all you do is dummy proof. You just type in garage, and there it says number of garage spaces. You select it, you move it over. Now you hit the back button, and now it's going to be below your results tab. I just got to find it right there. See that? And I'm going to hit three plus, and that's going to knock down a lot. Seven. That's perfect. Okay. Now that's five miles. That's five miles out. So I hit results. I check all above. I hit quick CMA. And Kaka, you're going to have the same thing you did for her for a CMA, but this is a CMA of lease properties. So you just text her and go, hey, I'm meeting you tomorrow at two. What were you thinking on your lease price? I was thinking like two grand. Okay, cool. I'll see you tomorrow. Now, looks like we could go well over two grand, right? Because those are active. That's her competition. No, those are leased. So those are done. Those are actual lease prices. What's your square footage, Leslie? Almost 4,000. Okay, so you can see that there's not anything. So yeah, obviously it's going to be more than two grand. Uh, it's going to be more like 4,500 or, you know, whatever. So you're going to kind of, you you're going to kind of let her go with it. Where do you see that price? Because I can see. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. So at the very top, it says leased. Look at my cursor. Yes. Lease okay. Well, here's the properties. And right over here, that's the lease price, but that's the sold price, the next one. So that means that's the actual lease price. Okay. So 2400 so 2400 2500 But down here, it says 4100 And that square footage is. 32 she told me it, it's oh, about four grand yeah. so we're going to be four to 4500 4700 i'm really going to be what okay with it, whatever she recommends because it, it's going to come down to either we're going to get showings or not and if we don't get showings we're going to start reducing by 100 bucks all right so i print that i've obviously i've obviously i printed the agent for report the tax roll and this cma no net sheet because it's a lease means the only thing we're going back to is texasrealestate.com and that's why this is a quick training, but it's good because it's all repetitive. So again, you're going to get to this sheet. It's going to say, hi, Stuart. Hi, Doug. Hi, Tara. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Fred. You're going to hit zip form. So screen turns blue. You're looking for one tab. What is it? New. Looking for one tab, the new tab. <laughs> right here. There it is. You don't touch anything other than that. What boxes are going to come up? Five. Do we care about the last two? No. no. We've got seller, buyer, lease. We hit it. We name it residential. Leslie. I always hit residential. It doesn't matter. And then you hit this drop down and there's four templates that you'll have tenant, seller, landlord, buyer. She's a landlord. Select it. Scroll down. You hit save and we're about to see the white summary square and we're going to go two tabs over to documents. And there it is. Click documents. And we have everything in there that we need for a lease. So obviously I need the IBS. Again, this is going to be a print job. So you're going to print it. You're going to open it and scroll down. It'll be pre-filled. You go back. There is no seller's disclosure. So really all you need is a listing agreement. You click on the listing agreement and you're going to fill in here looking at the tax roll. Oh, what's her name? And I like all caps. You don't have to do all caps. I just do it. So I don't have to. I don't worry about the address right there because as I scroll down, that's where the address goes. Oh, what was it again? Lot six, lock age, blah, 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 subdivision, uh, city of Plano, uh, Collin County, one, two, three, easy street. I'm just kind of going quicker so you'll see what's templated. You go and it says 12 months to 48 months. All right. You hit on the blank and it's going to be tomorrow when I meet her. The listing is going to go to what, four months? Let's just say it could be three months. What if I go on the listing and she wants me to change it to two months? What am I going to do? Uh, you got a pen? Uh, let me mark it out and put the new month and you'll just initial next to it. So you got to be really flexible. What if one day this doesn't work and you can't open zip forms? You know where all the forms are? Trek's website. You don't even have to log in. It says my popular forms or popular forms. You click on it, you type in lease and it'll pull this up. You print it, start handwriting it. So, you know, there's always a way to, to do it. Uh, you scroll down, it's got 100%. That's my commission. That means that if she lists the home for 4,000 a month, the first month's rent's made out to DHS Realty for four grand. Then I take 50 bucks out and I get half of it, which is 
going to be 1950 because half of 4,000 is 2,000 and then 50 bucks comes out. But if Dave's with Evie Holiday, I'm going to send a check for 2,000 to Evie Holiday and then it goes through their system and gives him what's left over. Okay. Oh yeah. Trust me. It ain't going to be much that he'll get um, because they take out of leases, you know, 30% or seven, you know, 70, 30 or 80, 20. So again, whenever you're with a lease, that's the only time the check's made out to me. In our company, your commission check for a sale or for a buyer is made out to you at the title company because they wire my 225 to me. So you get table funded at closing. Like truly title, if you came here to close a buyer, after it funded, they just call you and go, hey, you want your commission wired to you or you want to pick it up? And it's your call. But a check will never be made out to me and then I cut it to you because there's no splits. But on a lease, it's got to go through the broker for me to 1099 you at the end of the year. On a CD, I know your amount, but on a lease, I don't. So that means that I'm going to get the check and then I'm going to open an envelope at my house and it's going to say, hey, Janet, Worth, she gets this amount. It's going to have an address. I'm going to go into back agent. I'm going to see your property. I'm going to go to the commission disbursement and I'm going to go, oh, hey, Janet, I'm going to text you and go, hey, I've got a check either I can put on my front porch or mail it to you. You pick and you go, oh, just mail it. Or you say, I want to pick it up today. I don't hold. I don't put a hold on personal checks. All the big brokers do 14 days. So. Like I was out of town, right? Two weeks ago, Florida for four days. I got home. I told you this last night. I got home Sunday night at 1030. I had 14 checks. I didn't go to bed at one. I cut every check. I put them all in envelopes. And then I text 14 agents that night and said, hey, your check's ready. You want me to mail it in tomorrow's mail or do you want to pick it up on my porch? None of those checks cleared for four or five days. But I just send that out and worry about it clearing if if it doesn't that i'll take care of it myself so on my closing the big one on the 30th you're going to get it on the 30th yep yep and I will get the check right there. well is it cash it's a cash wire. yeah then yeah it'll fund like that and that means that you just wait in the lobby you know yeah absolutely now if it's a loan you might it might take a couple hours right because the title company sends document but with a cash deal yeah you go get a bagel come back and it should be here or what you could do is just give them your wire instructions and they wire it. But the neat thing is on your first closing, it's always nice to take a picture. I got my, you know, yeah. Uh, and that way you're like, damn, 30 days, 24 grand. Pretty strong. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> all right. So anyways, this is all filled out. I'm actually not going to touch anything else in it. Okay. It's all filled out. Now, one thing that I do have and I template in everybody's is that if, uh, if they decide to sell the home to somebody that you're going to get 3%, even though it's just listed for lease. See that? Okay. What that means is that I list your house for lease. And then you call me one day and you're like, Hey, the tenant wants to buy it instead of lease it. I know. That, well, yeah, because you, well, they're going to sign this listing agreement and it's an employment contract. So you would say, Hey, that's, uh, I get paid on that. Well, no, uh, you don't. Well, I think we need to read the lease, the listing agreement. Let, let me take you down to paragraph, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I also do it. You don't even know it because, but in your agreement between brokers, so there's a form and we're done with the training because that's basically it. You're going to print all this. You close, when you work with a landlord and a seller, you close at the house. When you work with a buyer, you docu-sign. And that's why when we train docu-signing, it, you know, it, it's a little longer because we, we do that. I'm going to answer that question. Hold on one second. Let me just get off this so people don't have to listen to everything and get beat down and the training doesn't go. It's already gone an hour and a half. I don't like training to be this long because nobody listens to it. 